Good evening. This is the forum for the County Commissioner, District 1, between Mitchell Ridley and Tucker Green. My name is Chuck Jones. I'm the Chairman of the Government Affairs Committee for the Dahlonega Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this event. I'd also like to thank FYN Media Group, Brian and Michael. You don't see them on the streaming, but they do a lot of work to make this available to all of us, and they do a great job, and they're a tremendous partner. So what we'll do is we had a, we picked numbers before it started. So Mitchell will make the opening two minute statement and then Tucker will be second. We'll ask questions throughout the evening. They'll each get the same questions and it'll alternate between who gets the question first. And at the end of the evening, the closing statements will be reversed and Tucker will make the first closing statement and then Mitchell will make the last. So good evening, thanks for your willingness to serve. I appreciate it. What people don't realize is you don't get rich serving on the uh, county commissioners. And so the willingness to put yourself out and serve the community, I applaud both of you for that. So the first question after the opening statement will go to Mitchell. You'll get them twice. So if you want to make your opening statement, go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm Mitchell Ridley. I live at 121 Skyline Drive. I'm a lifelong resident of Lumpkin County, a graduate of Lumpkin County High School. I owned a business for 41 years in Dahlonega. Um, I have my family here with me tonight. I'm pleased to welcome them into the arena also. Uh, but we've, uh, we love Dahlonega. We, we feel like that Dahlonega is a uh, very inviting place to people. Uh, Everyone that comes here seems to feel the same way. It's the hometown feel. It's the uh, ambiance. It's the beauty of the, uh, the nature, the history of Dahlonega. Uh, our roots run very deep in Dahlonega. We've served Lumpkin County for over 30 something years combined with my family. And we really love Dahlonega and hope that everyone would enjoy Dahlonega as much as we do and uh, come and visit, stay with us, uh, plant your roots here. Uh, we just include everybody. Uh, I don't think a neighborhood or a community has ever been accepting to people as much as Dahlonega has in Lumpkin County. And I look forward to serving you. Thank you. Tucker. Good evening. My name is Tucker Green. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Rob Nichols in the chamber, um, FYN and Chuck Jones for helping to facilitate this evening. Um, it's so important for us to have forum opportunities like this to engage and inform our community and our voters on um, why each candidate should be elected. And, you know, through this, we are actually helping to empower um, each one of our community members um, when they step into that booth to be able to vote with absolute confidence. So we thank y'all. Um, my wife and I moved up here 15 years ago, and I will say, uh, Mitchell just mentioned that this community is incredibly inviting, and that is 100% fact. Um, it's, it, it's part of the reason why we moved up here. Um, we came up here looking and chasing dreams, um, dreams to raise a family in an environment where we felt safe, where we felt comfortable, an environment where we felt that our kids could get the kind of education that they needed to. Uh, my wife's an educator. She's a kindergarten teacher down at Blackburn. Education's a big piece of that puzzle for us. And we felt that about Lumpkin County, and we have seen that day in and day out uh, here in this county. So with that, we, we needed to find a way to, to begin to serve. Um, I grew up in the home of a pastor, so I, I saw what servanthood and what serving really looked like from day one. Um, my wife and I immediately got involved with our children's program over at Dahlonega UMC, uh, ran that, and it's still one of the most thriving uh, programs today. Served as the uh, vice president of the UNG Wesley Foundation. Served seven years on the park and rec board underneath the Lumpkin County government. Four was the board chair. I got to see a lot of the inner workings of government through that entity. Uh, was the vice president of Dahlonega JCs. Uh, we facilitated and put on Gold Rush, uh, which is coming up this weekend. Uh, president of the Dugout Club at Lumpkin County High School and it's one of the most thriving booster clubs today. Um, these are all the things that led me into the servanthood that has put me in this position today. Thank you. 
Mitchell, the first question will go to you. What are your thoughts on the creation and enforcement of a noise ordinance? Uh, I'm very passionate about quality of life here. Uh, that's why people move here, just like Tucker. They want a quality of life. And that's been the platform of my campaign, has been quality of life. We have abundance of people moving here looking for the same things that I grew up with, the small town feel, the uh, beauty of the nature. But if we do not protect our resources and we protect our children's futures and our futures, we, we lose something in the community. Uh, we have had uh, people that's opened up venues and such uh, and sometimes it's just a little too loud. So uh, that would be one of the things that the commission is actually working on right now is a noise, a noise ordinance. So uh, I definitely feel impassioned to do that and to follow that. Thank you. Thank you. Tucker? So in regards to noise ordinance, this has been a hot topic um, here in Lumpkin County over the last few months due to multiple issues. Um, so I, I'm a believer in small government. I don't believe that government should have mass amount of control. Um, and so with that, I believe in people's rights. And I believe in people's rights on both sides of the fence. Um, I believe that when you have a wedding venue that is playing loud music on a Saturday night, that there needs to potentially be some type of a shutoff time um, for that. Because there are people um, surrounding neighbors that, that may be trying to get rest to, to go to church the following morning or whatever it may be. Um, but at the same time, that wedding venue that has planted itself in Lumpkin County, which, you know, we are known as one of the wedding venues of the South, um, they need to be able to have that opportunity to be fruitful and to have success in their business ventures that, that they have implemented. Um, so I do, I do believe that it is important for us to find some middle common ground there that benefits both parties. Um, again, I do believe in small government. Um, however, I do believe that it is our job um, to implement some of these things to help protect both parties. Again, we, we want to keep Lumpkin County as a place that people want to be and want to come to and that they want to remain here. Um, we've got to have re retainage and retention of those community members because those community members, those business owners, those neighbors are the ones that make Lumpkin County what it truly is. And so we've got to fight for both sides. And, and I'll promise and I'll vow to fight uh, for both sides of, of that fence, per se, and uh, make sure that, that both have equal opportunity, both to a high quality of life and to the opportunity for fruitful, successful, successful business. Thank you. So, Tucker, this question will go to you first. Do you, do you believe that we should consolidate the city and county governments? So that, that's one that's been brought up a few times. And I have heard numerous elected officials um, over the last little while discuss this topic. And every elected official that I speak to um, says the same thing, and that it would not benefit to combine the two. Um, while there are a lot of commonalities and a lot of things um, that we do share, um, there's not a whole lot of repetitive um, departments and opportunities for that. Um, with that, the county and, and the city are so different um, in, in a lot of their offerings. You know, people decide to live in the city um, for some of the services that the city can offer, for the square life, for the nightlife, for the lights that are of the city. Um, a lot of us, like myself, uh, decide to live just outside city limits where that's not an issue. Um, so it, they're two completely different entities. Now, there are a few ways in which we could potentially look at that, and it's, it's my job and my role, if elected, um, to, to look at some of those opportunities and see if there is such a way, for example, with sewer and water. Um, you know, the city has a fantastic water plant um, and sewage treatment plant that, that could potentially help provide water and sewage to county members. Um, so w with that, you know, I do not believe that at this time it would be uh, advantageous for us to do so. Um, however, if we can find ways to potentially have any type of merger between those two, um, it's our job to be the ears of the community. You know, if we feel and hear from multiple people that feel like, hey, this is something that we need to find ways, then we're going to find those ways because that's what we're doing. We're representing the people of Lumpkin County, not our own ideas. 
All Thank right. you. Thank you. Mitchell? Yes. Um, as serving on the city council for eight years, uh, there's reasons people move into the city limits. There's services that the city provides, sidewalks, uh, curbside garbage pickup, recycling. Uh, we provide street lights, uh, parks, and also um, the infrastructure. Uh, being raised out in the county all my life, there's one thing that I have never missed is when the power goes off out in the county, I never had water. And I'm gonna tell you something, when you don't have water and you got three kids at home, uh, we have problems. So I tell you, uh, the city has been a great place to live and, and that's the reason I'm running for county commissioner is the, to bridge that gap, to fill in, that's where this will work, where we commingle our ideas and bring them forward to the people. But I am not in favor of consolidation at this time. Uh, there'll be a time in the future, I believe, that we will be consolidated. But you can't ask the man that lives up at Turner's Corner to pay for streetlights inside the city limits when he doesn't get the benefit of them. So. Thank you very much. Mitchell, you'll get to answer this one first. So do you have a vision for Dahlonega and Lumpkin County? If so, can you describe what that vision is for the next 10, 15, or 20 years? Well, my vision is, like I said, to build a gap between the city and county. We, we've had some issues in the past. Uh, we, we've had to kind of mark our ground. Uh, we've been in lawsuits among each other uh, and that's that's ridiculous all we're doing is spending taxpayers money uh, i don't believe in that wasting of money i uh, i believe that we need to look at what we have and what we can offer but the plan has to be in place the city we've worked to get a three and five year plan we have a rotation out on equipment now We've implemented other plans to work together with the city and county, and we, we've, we're doing a great job, but it's gonna take time. Uh, you know, Lumpkin County and the city has always been separate, and they offer different things, and we just need to maintain the beauty of this city and county. Thank you, Mitchell. Tucker? So, in, in thinking about our vision, um, what is one of the most important things in Lumpkin County? And one of the most important things in Lumpkin County is our youth. And I'm going to tie that back into just a second. Um, when, when we moved up here, one of the things that we loved about Lumpkin County was how beautiful the rolling hills were, how green everything was, how development was, was small, but yet still large in a, in a way, but it was protected and, and it wasn't super, super evident. Um, so we have to do things that help protect that. Um, I'm a big fan of agritourism. I, I believe in our agritourism <clears throat> in a mightily way because what I believe it does for us is that it brings tourism into Lumpkin County, it produces tax revenue, but with really low impacts on our land and our topography. Um, when you drive through Frogtown or how Damascus or, or anywhere else um, outside of, of this immediate area, you see that impact and you see the fact that some of these places are able to maintain that same look and the beauty of Lumpkin County through that. Um, it, you know, also growth is inevitable, it's coming. You know, we can't stop it. Dahlonega and Lumpkin County have been growing since its founding. It's coming, we've seen it from Alpharetta on up into coming, on up into Dawson now. So it is gonna be coming and we've gotta find ways to properly prepare for that. Um, so back to the youth. It, Planning 10, 20, 15, you know, 30 years from now, whatever it may be, if we are keeping the youth as the basis of every decision that we make on how it's going to impact them that 10, 20, 30 years down the road, then we are always going to be making the right choice. We're going to be providing job opportunities for them. Give kids the reason to come back to Lumpkin County a county that we have all come to love and selfishly I want my kids back here and, and living in Dahlonega so I get to spend time with my grandkids. So we, all, we always have to keep that at the forefront of every decision and if we do, we're gonna be successful. Thank you. 
Tucker, this question will start with you. So in regard to land use, there have been a number of requests for variances and special land use applications submitted such as shooting ranges, ATV parks, RV parks. Is it time for the county to implement zoning or does the current land use system work? That's another hot one that's been coming up lately is, as I know, our current Board of Commissioners have been dealing um, with a lot of these issues. Um, you mentioned the gun range. You mentioned the RV park. Um, again, I'm a small government guy, but within that small government, we also have to protect the citizens of Lumpkin County. Okay. In regards to the gun range, um, you know, I believe that if things had been done properly, if things had been approached the way that they should have, that, that maybe there could have been some concessions made. Um, in that particular case, the, the business owner did not approach that business properly with, with not issue or requesting a business license. Um, the, the RV park, you know, is another thing. Again, you know, these, these folks obviously bought property and would love to put something in like that, but how does it affect the local residents around that area? Um, and, and based on everything that everybody got up and spoke about, it was going to be adversely. Um, so with that, I do believe that there is opportunity and the time is now for us to begin to look at some of those zoning potentials on how to create some safe spaces um, for those moving into Lumpkin County, for those that want to develop business in Lumpkin County. I believe that everybody has the fair share and the, the opportunity and the right um, to be able to do that, to be able to build a business that maybe they want or to be able to protect the space that they moved up here for. I, I grew up in, uh, in the city and uh, moving out to the county was, was a, a, an incredible thing for me. I enjoyed doing whatever I wanted to do on my property. It felt great. And I don't want to strip that from, from myself or for any of the, the residents of Lumpkin County. Um, but at the same time, we've got to protect those that have made this their home. Thank you. Mitchell? Yes. Uh, you brought up the shooting range and the RV park and Iron Mountain. Uh, Iron Mountain has been an asset to this community. Uh, what we need to do in furthering uh, growth in this county is to not expand the government, but what we need to do is have rules and regulations that control what they do in certain hours and certain times of the day. So what I would do is uh, look at the RV park uh, as a county commissioner. I would look at uh, setting limits on the age of the RVs that could be brought in. Uh, the look at setbacks. We uh, the setbacks that we've got right now uh, with this particular development that has been talked about uh, would take about 20 acres or more off of their 100 acres that they've bought. Uh, so we're restricting their use already. Uh, what we need to do is just look at the benefits and how we want Lumpkin County to be and what we are willing to put up with. So um, the noise ordinance, the RV park, the shooting range. The shooting range, um, they, they came in under the radar. They, they did not follow the basic rules of opening a business here. So I would not reward bad behavior. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell, you'll get to do this question first. So tourism plays an important economic role in our community, and we want to protect the sanctity of our neighborhoods. But how do we protect our neighborhoods and still encourage tourists to utilize short-term rentals without banning them outright? Uh, that's a very good question. I tell you, Chuck, we've, uh, we're, we're looking at that in the city. What we did in the city uh, was actually put a limit uh, to where people could register a Airbnb inside the city limits. We gave them a certain period of time. Uh, I'm not suggesting that for the county, but what I am suggesting is when uh, you have a citizen that's lived in a subdivision for 26 years and the person bought the house on the left side of them and the right side of them and behind them, and it's the same person that's opened an Airbnb business, that is a business within a residential section. Uh, where is the rights of the homeowner that spent 26 years investing into their home and want to have, you know, just some good
good quality life. So if you're going to allow people to own multiple Airbnbs and run them as business, then they need to be treated as business. They're not part-time. So I would regulate them with having on-site or at least someone in Lumpkin County, if the residents that live next door to them have a problem, that you can call just like you do at the hotel. Call down to the office, tell them, say, hey, people on the lefts here partying like crazy, so let's kind of quieten it down. Thank you. Thank you. Tucker? So with short-term rentals, um, I've, I've had a, numerous discussions um, with people across the county that own short-term rentals, trying to get a good feel for where they are versus the ones that um, have been opposing it. So with short-term rentals, um, what I have gathered and what, what I have found is that most short-term rental owners um, have pretty strict policies on their rentals. Maybe it's a certain amount of days. It's no parties allowed. It's no animals. It's a certain amount of people. Um, so to make a blanket statement in that we need to, to get rid of SRTs is, is not a good one in my opinion. Um, those that, that operate underneath a business with their short-term rentals, they're pumping money back into our local economy through the hotel tax, um, through sales tax, and in numerous other ways. They're bringing tourists into Lumpkin County. Um, we, we, we're not overloaded with hotels um, at the moment, thank God. Um, and, and I hope that we don't become a city just full of hotel after hotel. Um, so with that, short-term rentals is a great way to offset that and to give tourists an opportunity, people that want to visit Lumpkin County, a place to stay that's, that's comfortable. But then what it also does is for all these people that have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and have spent a lifetime trying to create and build some of these short-term rental opportunities, whether it's through VRBO or Airbnb or whatever venue it may be, um, they need to be able to reap from, from their hard work as well. And, and I don't want to see that restricted. Now, I do believe that there could be some policies written. For example, maybe like a three to four or five strike system, um, where if, if, you are, if you receive X amount of phone calls in, in a period of time, then your short-term rental license is revoked. And what that's going to do is it's going to protect those neighbors that Mitchell just talked about and, and keep it safe and, and keep it a good, successful, viable way to give, place, give people a place to come uh, and stay when they visit Lumpkin County. Thanks, Tucker. All right, Tucker, you'll start this question. What are the, your thoughts on the county and city's waste management systems, specifically the cost of all waste going to landfills versus the cost of reducing that amount by recycling? Our policies and procedures now will have an impact on future generations for sustainability practices. So right now, we, uh, we have a transfer station that, that is receiving trash and is shipping it off. Um, it's my understanding um, through some conversations that we've had that uh, right now, based on research that our Board of Commissioners has done, that our City Council members have done over the years, that it is the least impactful and least uh, costly to be able to do that at the moment. To, to build our own landfill, I know that we have had some people in our forum that suggested building our own landfill. Um, right now, that's not something that we need to be doing. Um, who wants a landfill uh, next door to them? You know, and so where would it go? Who would manage it? Who would facilitate it? Who would make sure that we don't have things leaching into the earth uh, that don't need to be? Um, right now, our recycling program, I know recycling is something that we have discussed, and I've, I've been able to discuss it with, uh, with a few of our citizens. And right now, there's, there's people that are extremely passionate about recycling. And I do not believe that we have done a great job with it. We've, we've made attempts at providing opportunities for recycling. Um, I was speaking to a gentleman just the other day um, at Foothill Grill who said, you know, Tucker, I, I love recycling, but right now it's such a burden that it's hard for me to do it. But I would love a place to be able to do it. Um, so we have to find a way to be able to provide a recycling opportunity um, for those that want to be able to. Um, one that, that doesn't, you know, he mentioned uh, there's a cart full of all the aluminum cans up at the transfer station here at the dump where they, they're handling recycling right now. And he doesn't like going to drop off cardboard because he gets attacked by yellow jackets every time. So we've got to provide ways to be able to uh, give opportunities to those that are uh, fanatic about it and that, that desire to recycle because recycling is an important part of preserving this county and our state and our country for our youth. Um, and it would be something maybe you pay by. I know uh, my opponent the other night mentioned that he would like to 
uh, enforce a recycling fee for every community member. And I don't believe that that's the right thing to do. Thank you. Mitchell? Uh, I did not enforce a recycling fee. The people that within the city limits pays for recycling, and that is each homeowner. And what we did was spread that out over the entire system. Uh, you pay for recycling whether you recycle or not. It costs $4.50 a month. Uh, I'm not in favor of mandatory fees upon anyone, but what I am for is recycling. And we have to look at recycling to be mainstream where it's the the places I have seen while being within the city limits and we looked at other systems it seems like the easier you make the recycling the more recycling is available and it's more used so the city imposed a fee and we hired a company that comes in and they pick up recycling once a week so the county is not at that point and people have to transport it. Uh, maybe if we had a central location uh, that was easier accessible and we could use inmate labor to do a uh, stream, a mainstream recycling where everything could be dumped and then the inmates would separate it, maybe that would help alleviate some of the problems that Tucker's talked about. Thank you very much. Um, Mitchell, this question will start with you. What talents and skills do you have that will make you an effective leader for our community as a commissioner? And what qualifications distinguish you from your opponent? Well, I've served for eight years on the city council. Um, you know, anybody can get elected one time, but when they vote for you a second time, they, they mean business. So uh, I believe that through those skills that I have honed for 41 years standing behind a barber chair talking to people, uh, solving their problems and listening to their problems, and just being a sounding board, sometimes that's all someone needs is someone to listen. Uh, and that's uh, a great part of being a public servant is being able to listen and to have some compassion for exactly what they're talking about. Uh, when you have people that move here and that want to be a part of the system and the community, we have to include those. And my skills, like I said, is my business skills, my service to the community, uh, and that's exactly where I feel that I, I separate from Tucker, that uh, I've served for eight years. I have been a part of the process, and I believe that Dahlonega is better off today than it was eight years ago. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Tucker? <clears throat> so with this question, so I, I love to serve people. Um, serving people, uh, I'm in sales, um, which is very serving oriented, um, as Mitchell does um, with his business. It, and the, the ability to serve people is something that, that is not just provided to everybody. It's not something that is instilled in every single individual. Um, it's something that, that was instilled in me from an early age. And so the ability to serve people um, is, is one attribute that makes me a great opportunity and a great candidate and a great commissioner for this role. Um, you know, I served on the Park and Rec Board for seven years, as I mentioned, four as the board chair. Um, during those seven years, we took a Park and Rec system that, that was flailing at that time. And we redeveloped it. And you've, you can see a lot of that as you drive through Yahalo Park um, right now. Now, there are some discrepancies that you see driving through the park right now because they're short-staffed. Um, and we need help um, to maintain some of it. But we, we vetted the process of, of our last two park and rec directors, um, with Wade Chandler being the one that's currently serving. Um, we, were, we were tasked with that responsibility. So I, I know how to handle that. I know how to put people in place to run these departments and these entities uh, that will make successful ventures for everything that we do here. Um, it's, it's not the people up at the helm that make the county so great, it's the people that we put into place. 
And um, identifying those skills and those talents, I believe, is something is my strong point. Um, managing people has always been something that I've been very, very good at and inspiring people. Um, I'm currently in the Leadership Lumpkin class, and we took a, uh, a little test about ourselves the other day, and, and one of the things that, that stuck out at me and that was one of my highest ratings was that I, I like to inspire people. I like to make people feel good about themselves and push them to do great things. And that's, that's what leaders do. Leaders aren't necessarily the greatest at, at one in particular thing, but they're really good at inspiring people. Um, and then problem solving. You know, as this job is, is going to present itself uh, with many, many opportunities to problem solve, that is one of my strengths, and I look forward to using that in this role. Thank you. Uh, Tucker, you'll start on this question. What are your views on COVID restrictions, vaccine mandates, lockdowns, mask mandates, and any other business ordinances to do with COVID-19? It was a long question. So. And it might be the most loaded question as of yet. Um, so COVID hit all of us hard. There is nobody in this room, there's nobody watching online um, or sitting behind the table here or behind the podium that was not affected by COVID. It was a, a very serious uh, thing that came through here and, and it shut us down, it crippled us. So there's no doubt the severity of, of COVID. Um, you know, I believe as far as mandates go, I, I do not believe in them, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, everyone should have the right to decide, especially with the vaccines. Um, you know, I don't believe that someone should be forced into making a decision of that magnitude. Um, you know, I've, there's been great results from the, uh, the vaccine. I've also heard terrible, terrible stories. I've got a friend right now who two weeks ago got the COVID shot, woke up Saturday morning paralyzed from the waist down. We don't need to be enforcing those types of things on people. Um, you know, in regards to masking up, if, if it makes you feel safer, if it makes you feel more comfortable, then by all means, wear one. Protect yourself. But that doesn't mean that every single person should be forced into that same compliance. Um, it's been a challenge. Um, you know, my wife being a teacher, and I've heard from numerous teachers, one of the most challenging things that they faced during COVID was teaching with a mask on. It was always in their face. They, they speak for a living. And it was a challenge. It was also a challenge, uh, my wife as a kindergarten teacher, to keep five and six-year-olds wearing a mask the entire time. It's, it's a major challenge. So my, my advice and my, my thought on this is if it feels like you are protected by wearing it, by all means do so. That is your right and your choice. But I don't believe that that should be inflicted on anyone. Thank you. Mitchell? Uh, yes. COVID was one of the hardest things that I had to go through as an elected official. When they started talking about COVID and shutting down, we, we met that morning and we had the city council, other businesses come in there and pleading not to shut them down. I mean, to shut down a business is the worst thing I've ever seen happen in the United States. I, I just couldn't believe it, that here we are, one of the greatest countries in the world, we can send a man to the moon and we are shutting down our country. I could not believe it. The mass mandates, we had the governor impose certain restrictions and as elected officials, we had to follow those. Uh, the first time in 41 years that I was put out of business, I've never drawn unemployment. Could never draw unemployment because I was self-employed. But this was the time that they re released funds and I didn't draw unemployment this time. I prepared, I had enough money set aside that we could stay at home for three months. Luckily, it only asked for six weeks. I was back in the shop working. Uh, I was mandated to wear a mask. I had to sanitize intense sanitation, check people's temperatures. This is not the way I want to live. The shots, the vaccines, they're available. It is a personal choice. If you want it, please get it. Please get it. 
but it's not something that I would ever mandate for anyone. Thank you, Mitchell. Mitchell, I'll start this question with you. What would you do differently from previous commissioners? What are your goals for the county? And what are the changes you want to make for the betterment of the community? Um, exactly what we've been talking about tonight, quality of life. If you don't have quality of life and you don't have a peace and quietness of your own sanctuary at home, then you don't have much. So we need to look at the quality of life and protect it. Uh, protect it for the people that's been here all their life and protect it for the people that's just moved here. Because everybody is seeking something that came to this town. And we have been blessed to have a wonderful town. And as far as I would like to cut some of the wasteful spending uh, and I see some of those areas that can be cut. But we have a great commission. They have worked very diligently. Uh, I'm not here to disparage anybody's abilities. I am just offering myself and some of my ideas. And what I can do is bring those ideas and bring an open mind to the commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mitchell. Tucker? So I, I do believe that our BOC has done a very good job overall. Um, it's, it is not an easy task for anyone. It's a, uh, a part-time job with less than part-time pay with more than full-time responsibilities. Um, I, I believe that they've done a very good job. But with, with that, I do believe that there is still vast room for improvement. Um, we need somebody that can bring in new and fresh ideas into that board. Um, you know, somebody that, like myself, who's mo who moved here 15 years ago to, to get away from what I grew up with is going to be somebody that's going to find ways to protect the Lumpkin County that we love because I cherish it the way I do. I know what it's like on the other side. And there's a lot of people that love the other side. I don't. I want to protect what we have here, and I want to find ways and bring ideas, new and fresh ideas, to that board um, that improve on our current quality of life and that protect our current quality of life. Um, I want to find ways to bring in a grocery store. I know that there's, that's already in the works for the most part, but the deal is not done, nothing is signed, and ground has not been broken. So we've got to continue to fight for that. I know that everybody in this room would love an opportunity for more than just the Walmart or the Fresh and Low that's not even there anymore. You know, so many of us travel down to Dawson County or to Hall County to go grocery shopping at the Kroger or the Publix or wherever it may be. I think that bringing us a quality grocery would benefit every single person in this county and keep tax dollars here in Lumpkin County. Um, bringing in additional revenue and cutting spending is, is a must for us. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. One of those reasons is to provide for all of our first responders in the way that we need to. There was a study done recently and they were a little underpaid. I know we have a, an 8% increase coming the first of the year. It's still going to be a little short of where we need to be and we're going to find ways to fight for that. Thank you very much. Tucker, uh, this will be qu a question to you first. So one of the things that we talk about a lot in the community is the Gateway Corridor. Really, if you go up 400 and we have the hospital coming as well as it's a, such a large part of the development for the future. So what are your thoughts on that? So we spoke earlier about in, inevitable growth. That growth is coming. When, when you put a hospital, which we are all in dire need of, um, for that whole safety portion that, that we, has been discussed and brought up numerous times this evening. So the hospital is a, is a necessity for us. With that is going to come new nurses. It's going to come new doctors. It's going to provide opportunities for people in Lumpkin County, uh, for those that are in the nursing school at UNG. Um, with that, we are going to see that growth, and we're going to have to be able to provide things down in that area for them, from restaurants to other uh, shopping entities to be able to, to utilize when they're stepping away off of a break or when they're done with the work or whatever it may be. Now, with that, I, I want to see, and I will fight to make sure that this happens. Um, when you go to Hilton Head, Hilton Head has done a phenomenal job with, with some of their, uh, their beautification codes. And um, I want to see something that is implemented with any future growth in that area that when you 
come up 400 or when you come in 60 either direction, that when you see those developments, that it feels like Lumpkin County. That's incredibly important to me. I don't want to see strip mall after strip mall and failed nail salon and failed restaurant over and over and over again and it being turned and turned and turned. Um, and I believe that creating something that fits, that's beautiful, that people want to be a part of will, will retain businesses and will make that successful um, while keeping that area beautiful. Um, what I love about that area is, is that it is an area where we can grow. If you head 60 in towards town, just beyond the Home Depot, topography between the mountainside and the river, it's going to prevent growth really coming in this way. So I love developing that little portion and giving the, count, the residents of Lumpkin County some opportunities that we've been looking for and ways to bring tax revenue back into the county that we're losing to Dawson and to Hall. Thank you. Mitchell? Yes, I think the hospital is one of the greatest things. Uh, partnering with Northeast Georgia Medical Center was phenomenal. Uh, we've got to give our ha hands up to Steve Gooch, Will Wade, uh, he's now our representative, but Kevin Tanner was at the time, and our local officials. Um, we had a failing hospital that was a scandal, uh, taking people's money and ripping off uh, Medicaid and Medicare. So when the university bought that building, it saved that building from becoming that eyesore that Tucker's talking about. But with that, Northeast Georgia bought the certificate of need. So now we're going down to 400 and building a new hospital. It's still going to be the same size. It's still going to be basically the same group of people working. There'll be other outbuildings, medical offices, and other things that will bring to that. But what we do need to look at is the protection of the corridor. And I think the city and the county both have comprehensive plans that is in place and are substantial, and they will work. The thing is, we just have to follow them. And that's the main thing. Uh, as far as the hospital, the infrastructure is now being put in place to get uh, other businesses there. We did not have natural gas down there. Natural gas is the reason we lost a business down there before, which was Louvers. Uh, the high cost of them using LP gas was a, a detriment to their business. So. We lost a business because we did not have the infrastructure in. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Mitchell, this will be to you first, and then after this question, we'll go to closing statements. So Mitchell, when you look at the community partners for Lumpkin County, who are they to you? The university is number one. Uh, we are so fortunate to have a university here. And you know, our forefathers in 1800 and something decided that this town, a little mining town, needed a higher education. We didn't even have schools out in some of the parts. So the thinkers back then were great men. Uh, we have a great university. UNG was the first university to allow women into it, state. Can you imagine that? The first women in college came to UNG in the whole state of Georgia. So UNG is definitely a partner. The city of Dahlonega is a partner. The agriculture is a partner. We need to preserve our history and our heritage. And if elected, I have ideas, and if not elected, I will share them anyway, that we need to protect the heritage farmers here. They need to be able to farm and give back to the community in ways that is showing the next generation. Uh, so many people don't understand where food comes from. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's detriment that if you don't understand where things come from and what it takes to make it. Uh, I think that we have a great community here. Uh, I've been a
blessed to live here all my life, and I just really, really thank the people of Lumpkin County for their support throughout my career. Thank you. Thank you, Major. Tucker? So when you think about community partners um, here at Lumpkin, <clears throat> the three largest uh, providers are UNG, our county school system, and COYO. They hire more people than anyone else in this county. My thought is that we, we find ways to invest in those three and make sure that they feel and that they know that we have their back. So UNG, between students and faculty, are near 9,000 people in Lumpkin County from August until May. They bring a mass amount of money into this county. They, they eat at our restaurants, they shop at our shops, they, they empty the shelves at Walmart as we so often see uh, Frog Week and then the week leading up to school. It's imperative that we find ways to partner. There was a, a, a question in the forum this past week that was brought up and uh, it was asking if, if we felt that the university should voluntarily pay property taxes. And my answer was no. Why would we say, hey, thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you do for our county and all the money that you bring in and the jobs that, that you offer to all of our people by asking them to pay volunteer property taxes? To me, that's an insult. Um, you know, when you look at our county school system and, and the job that, that Superintendent Dr. Rob Brown has done, uh, Rob's a dear friend of mine. I love what he is doing in our school systems. The, the innovative ways in which our high school is preparing kids for the real world is something that I never got even in the big city. They're doing an amazing job. We've got to find ways to continue to partner with them. Um, and then outside of all that is you look at the volunteers that run all of our organizations in this county. I've never been in an area that had such strong organizations that people dedicate and change lives on a daily basis. Thank you. So tonight we'll do we'll finish with our closing statements. First, I want to thank everybody for coming and everybody who's listening in the chamber. So Tucker, you will do the first closing statement, and then Mitchell, you'll get to finish. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank um, every single one of you again that have put this on to facilitate this, to give us an opportunity uh, to be heard. I I enjoy speaking more than I do writing. On a Facebook forum and, and I know the the admins and moderators of the Facebook page have done a tremendous job and it's been incredibly insightful um, for for Mitchell myself and for all the candidates in this as well as everybody else um, but to be a voice is a totally different thing um, in a setting like this um, I want to thank everybody that, that showed up this evening the people that showed up this evening regardless of which side that you're on as far as a vote it, it says to one thing to me it says that you care um, and that you're passionate and interested in the potential direction that this county is headed. Um, originally, this was a three-person race, and uh, I knew it was going to be tough. I, I was, you know, fairly well known in the community, but I was going against somebody that had served before, um, and I was going against somebody that lived here in town that I had heard nothing but great things from. That gentleman reached out to me shortly after he had already spent time and money and and uh, investing into this campaign. And he said, Tucker, he said, I just want to let you know that I'm, I'm stepping out of this race. I see something in you that I believe in and that I can get behind and fight for and that can be passionate about. I've never had more respect for somebody than I did that Saturday morning than Joe Morakovitz. For anybody, for a man, especially, you know, we, we do to, uh, tend to have a little sense of pride to us, to be able to step back and, and do that, uh, Joe, it speaks characters to you and who you are and the fact that you just want to see the best for West Lumpkin County. Um, I want to make everybody in here a promise, a promise to always fight for you, a promise to always give everything that I have to make sure that you have everything that you have and that we lead this county in the direction that it needs to go. I thank you all for all of your time. Thank you. Mitchell, you get to close us out. All right. Thank you. Uh, Folks, I've, I've been here, I've served you, I would like to continue to serve you. Uh, it's bridging a gap. It's an unexpired term that was 
left vacant by a very sad circumstance of the loss of a commissioner, uh, a great friend of mine. And we need to build that bridge that we can have the city and county work as one, even though if we're not consolidated, I, like I said, we can work together for the betterment of all people. And I do believe that we have one of the greatest communities available in this region. Um, it is one of the best places to raise your family that you can ever find. We have an excellent school system. We have health care. We have a university. People can go actually from the cradle to the grave here. Uh, it, there's opportunities here. It's a great place. And I just want to appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to serve as your city council uh, person for post three. And I look forward to serving you as district one county commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. That's all for tonight. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and for being interested in your county government. And thank you for everybody here in the room tonight for doing that. And I'd like to thank FYN Media Group as well in the chamber for putting on a great show and, and doing all this hard work behind the scenes. Thank you very much.